Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Peter and in this video I would like to show you a bus shaker I made for my Fanatec V3 pedals. As you probably know, Fanatec does include by default a pair of vibration motors to the pedal set, but these are just a tiny motors that you can find in PlayStation or Xbox gamepads and they are way too weak for the heavy full metal pedals. And so I got this um, Dayton Audio TT25 Puck Transducer. Um, yeah, that's the full name. Um, but basically I decided to figure out a way to somehow attach it to my pedals. So the first couple of attempts were to put it against the pedals frame and so I made this um, adapter for it, where you put um, the, the rods that are holding the, the pedals into these two mounts here. Now, the thing is, this resulted in vibrations being felt all over the rig, apart from the pedals. Um, so yeah, that was a major fail. <laughs> so, out of desperation, <laughs> I made this terribly looking mount and put the speaker directly underneath the brake pedal and wow i mean it looks like crap but god damn it it provides a lot of feedback i i have to keep the volume around 50 percent because otherwise it's just way 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 too much the pedals have this uh, kind of like a metal block underneath the brake pedal and I made a thinner version of it um, that I 3D printed and um, added the mini bus shaker mount to it and that holds pretty well. I mean I have one screw at the moment only but with the two screws um, I'm having no issues at all and I use it already for several weeks. Um, and fortunately though, um, because I don't look at my pedals when racing, I don't see it. So the performance is the only thing I care about. And in this case, it is spot on. To get it all working, I originally got a 50 watt USB amp from eBay. And yeah, that was a total crap. I mean, it's pure waste of money because the RMS is more like 5 watts or something. Um, but my very good friend Brian sent me an amazing gift. A 4 channel Alpine car amplituner. And this is a completely different story. I mean it provides so much power I could literally cover my rig with bus shakers. And also here I would like to give a huge thanks to Brian for helping me on this project. I really, really appreciate that. Thanks again. The amp requires a 12 volt power adapter. So I got a PSU like the ones used in 3D printers. Then I designed a mounting bracket for my IKEA backhand desk. And this is just to keep it out of sight. Um, but at the same time, I can easily turn it on when racing. And then I also added a on-off switch to the amp. With so much power, I thought that having one shaker is a bit of a waste, so I got a couple of larger ones and mounted them on the sides of my Next Level Racing FGT rig. The 3D printed adapters hold very well, and I didn't have to drill any holes in the cockpit, so that's a plus. The amp is hidden underneath the seat, so now I have a pretty immersive setup, which I'm very happy with. Apart from the amp, all the components are pretty cheap, so I would definitely highly recommend to try it out. Um, especially if you are considering getting like a butt kicker or something, which is quite a more um, significant investment. As for the setup, I'm using it on my PC with the SimHub app and 
uh, at the moment I only have three effects enabled. So that's uh, wheel lock for the brake pedal, enabled just for the small shaker that I attach to the pedals. The road vibrations for the larger speakers on both sides of the seat. And the gear shift, which I set to trigger on all three transducers. I'm sure there's a number of videos on bus shaker setup in SimHub, but here's a short version. Open Shake It Bus Shakers tab in SimHub, enable the effects you'd like in the effects profile, then go to the sound out output, enable the outputs to which you connected your shakers, expand the option, test each channel just so you know which speaker is which, and then just set the effects on or off for the selected shakers. And one last note, the cheap shakers I got have a pretty narrow range of frequency where they perform the best. And for the small one, in my case, it was around 50 Hz. B but the larger ones, they were performing best around um, 42 to 44 Hz. So please make sure to test it when you're setting up your effects. All the models I showed in this video are uploaded on Thingiverse, so feel free to try it out yourself. Links in the description. Alright, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of the day. Bye!